What is going on everybody? Nico Lintz here again. We're back on the Bahama after a little bit off of the boat. Side note, this is the last time you're gonna see this boat looking like this. She's going in next week to get a little bit of a tune up and a facelift. Um, it's gonna be gorgeous, but that's not what this video was about. This video is about trimming your boat properly when you're running. And I'm doing it because this is probably the single most misunderstood and misused aspect of driving a boat that I've ever seen. A vast majority of inexperienced boaters, they never even touch the trim unless it's in shallow water. They push the throttle forward, the boat goes fast, and boom, they're happy. That's not the way to do it. You're destroying your fuel economy. You'll just, you are destroying your performance in some conditions, and it's just not the proper way to run a boat. And it can even be dangerous in some conditions. In a following Z, it's easy to stuff your bow if you're running all the way trimmed down. So let's talk a little bit about that. And because of what I just said, how this is a very misunderstood part of boating and misused part of boating, that's why when you see performance reports of boats, they can vary so much depending on what boat you're on or even who's driving the boat. Because this boat at 4,000 RPM with 0% trim, it's going to be doing like getting horrible fuel economy, horrible speed. It's not going to ride well, but keep that same 4,000 RPM when you have the trim up at, you know, 5 to 8% trim. The boat's going to perform great. It's going to be way faster, way more efficient, going to ride way better. So that's why whenever I see, and everyone here should do that too, whenever you see any performance reports or someone saying, oh, I was riding in this boat, it's horrible, rides horrible, it's slow, take it with a grain of salt until you experience it yourself because a lot of times it's captain air. If the captain does not know how to properly run the boat, the boat's not going to perform to its full potential. So that's kind of my goal in this video is to make sure people know how to run the boat properly. So for those of y'all who don't know, the trim on a boat is what makes the motors go up and down. You can see this button here on the side of the throttles. If I hit the up, all four of my motors go up. This one is getting a new trim unit. That's why it is staying down. If I hit down, they all go down. And then here on the throttle on this boat, I have individual trim controls for each motor. And so the very very basic gist of how this works is with the motors trimmed down your bow is going to be more of your more of the hull is going to be in the water the bow is going to be down this is good if you're in a head sea where waves you're going into the waves it gets your bow down it allows the front of the bow which is the sharpest entry point to cut through the waves first and make it smooth for everyone the more you trim up your motors, the more the boat gets out of the water, the more the bow gets out of the water. This is good in the following sea. We want to keep that bow high so you don't stuff a wave coming down off of a wave. What I'm going to try here real quick, I don't know if it's going to work. I'm going to try to put the drone up in the air and put it on this tracking mode to track the boat from the side. And then I'm going to get up on plane and start at 0% trim and then slowly increase my trim so you can see the water spray moving further and further aft on the boat as I increase the trim more and more. I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to try. So I'm running along here at about 30 knots. And if you look at the front of the hull, you can see a little black dot. That's the bow thruster. If you watch that dot, it's a good reference point to see how far the hull is out of the water. I'm going to start to trim the boat up here in a second. And when that happens right now, you can see the front of the boat start to get further out of the water and that little black dot get higher up. I'm going to put the trim back down now and you can see the bow get further down in the water. That spray go further forward. I'm putting it back up now. You can see the bow getting more out of the water, that black dot getting higher up, the spray getting further back. I put it down, the spray goes further up, the hull gets more in the water, the bow thruster is closer to the water. So now you can see how these different trim inputs affect the running attitude of the boat, and there are different situations in which you want that running attitude change that I'll explain now. And so clearly based off that brief, very basic summary that I just said, you know, there's no one size fits all when it comes to trim, different conditions. Um, they need different trim settings on the boat. But a very, very basic rule of concept is, and in flat water, this is true regardless of what you're doing, you know, you when you're running, you never want your motors trimmed all the way down. You're killing economy, you're killing performance the whole nine yards. If you get the boat up on plane, get it up on plane, you know, 4,000 RPM with the, the motors all the way down, the boat's gonna be really flat and you're gonna see this spray coming out the sides of the boat, coming off the sides of the boat relatively far forward. So, 
if you sit there at keep 4,000 RPM and slowly start hitting the trim up button so they go up and up, you'll start to see that spray move further and further aft and you're gonna feel the pickup and performance on the boat. That pickup and performance is what you're looking for. And there's really no, you know, there's really no steadfast rule, trim it up three seconds, trim it up four bars on the trim meter, on the engine gauge. Every boat's different, every operator is different, weight distribution is different. There's no one size fits all rule. When you're doing it, just keep it at 4,000 RPM, spend a day doing this. You know, trim it up a little bit, feel the difference of performance, trim it up a little bit more, feel the difference. And you can kind of feel where the boat has a sweet spot and where you like to do it. Very, very generally speaking, somewhere between the fourth and fifth little um, bar on the trim, um, on the trim gauge on your Yamaha or Mercury or Suzuki gauge, that's usually a pretty safe bet. It's not gonna be optimal, but it's a safe bet. You notice that when you're running, if you start to trim your motor up too high, your boat's gonna start bouncing in the water, your bow's gonna start going up and down. This is called porpoising. It's because the motors are too high where your props are not in clean water, and so it starts to cavitate. It's when air starts to get up under the cavitation plate. And that's when you know you've trimmed it up too far on a lot of boats not all boats but a lot of boats you can trim it up till you start to feel this porpoising and then slowly start trimming it down incrementally and then once that porpoising stops that's a good spot to keep your trim for flat water running so now that we have the basic trim setting done you know if you're up and running in flat water trim it up a little bit get a feel for kind of where the boat likes to perform in basic nice conditions that's where you're going to have it when conditions start to change that's when things are going to get a little more you know we're going to need more practice you know like i said if it's the, the waves start to pick up and it starts to get rough and you're going straight into the waves you're going to want to put that trim down get the front of the boat down as far as possible to break through the waves and almost you know jump from wave top to wave top that's really not what you're doing but it's kind of how it works when you're in a following seam, the waves are going with you. You're still going faster than them, but the, you're going with the waves. That's when you want to start trimming the boat up a little bit, and you'll be able to feel that. If you're in a following seam with the trim all the way down, it's not a comfortable ride. You kind of your bow is going to be, you know, running into every wave, and it's even dangerous. If you come off a wave with the trim down, it's very easy to stuff your bow into the wave in front of you, which means that wave goes over the top of your bow, gets a lot of water in the boat. It can be very dangerous. So in those conditions, you want to raise that trim up and you'll feel it. It's this is all something that just takes practice and feel. You'll feel what the boat wants to ride, you know, on top of that following seat. And you'll notice a significant um, improvement when it comes to ride comfort. And so there are also a little, some other little tricks you can do. You know, if you're in a beam sea, you can, in some boats, put the side of the, using the trim tabs and the trim of the motors, you can put the side of the boat that's, on the side the waves are coming towards, put that side higher than their other side and you can kind of cut down on spray. That's completely, you know, not what this video is about. That's a much more advanced thing to do, but that's kind of the basic of it. So now that we've talked about that, I'm gonna kind of explain um, and show you on this boat what I mean by how this is all gonna work. And so to kind of illustrate my point on that just a little bit further, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna show you on the Bahama here, I'm gonna get the boat up running. I'm gonna put it at 4,000 RPMs with the trim all the way down. And I'm gonna show you the fuel economy I'm getting and the speed that I'm getting. And then I'm gonna jack the trim up to 5% and then I'm gonna make sure it stays at 4,000 RPM and I'm gonna show you the speed and the fuel economy. And then I'm gonna put it up to 10% trim and you're gonna, I'm gonna show you the speed and economy and you're gonna be able to see the difference. I know on this boat at you know 4,000 RPM, it likes you know, between five to 7% trim. So once I get up to 10%, you're probably gonna see a decrease in economy uh, performance. But the point is that it's not consistent. You know, you need to adjust the trim for your speed and that differences in performance are not always because the boat's bad. It can be because the captain is bad and does not know how to run that boat. So let me do that. This boat, I have it set so I can see the percentage of the trim of each motor. So it'll be easy to see, but I'm gonna show you that right now. All right, so here's what I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to run it so I'm at 4,000 RPM up here while this is at 0% trim. And then I'm going to show you the speed that I'm doing. And then I'm going to show you what my total economy is. And then after that, I'm going to keep these at 4,000 RPM and jump this up to 5, show you the same thing down here, and then jump this up to 10 and show you the same thing down here. 
So you can see that right here, we're running just about 4,000 RPM with all of the motors at 0% trim, doing just under 34 knots and 0.78 nautical mile, miles per gallon. Here we bump it up to 5% trim while still holding 4,000 RPM. Here we're doing a little bit slower, we're at 33 knots, but we're getting 0.85, 0.86 nautical miles per gallon fuel economy, significantly better. And finally here, we're holding right about 4,000 RPM still, doing 10% trim now. And you can see we slowed down to 31 and a half knots, but our fuel economy went up drastically to 0 0.87, 0 0.88 nautical miles per gallon. So in short, trim is not a hard thing to master, and it's really not even a hard thing to learn. It's just something that a vast majority of your boaters don't even know they should be doing. What I just explained, as you saw, it didn't take me very long. It's not hard to do. Once the boat's up and running, increase that trim, find that sweet spot where you can feel the boat's performing better than it is when you just push the throttle and go. It's a significant difference. And as I mentioned earlier, there are a lot more fancy things you can start doing with trim once you get on boats with multiple motors, with making the boat perform in different ways, putting your center motors, you know, a couple of degrees deeper than your outside motors. There, there's a whole lot of games you can play, but for the purpose of this video, I just want to help spread the word of how trim is supposed to be done. Many people don't know how to do it and you need to be able to know how to do it to be able to boat properly and to make your boating experience more enjoyable and more safe. And so I know I've mentioned it a couple times in this video, but I just want to stress it that this is just something that takes practice and takes getting a feel for it. It takes getting on the water, practicing, playing with different trim settings on the motors, seeing how the boat that you're on responds to different trim inputs and trim settings. There's no one size fits all. There's no magic code to do it. You know, it's not something that's mathematical. You can do this on most boats. Um, it just takes getting a feel for it. Get out there, get comfortable with it. Now, on some of the more advanced boats like this one, yes, you can kind of make it a mathematical thing. I have it set so I can see the percentage of trim on each individual motor. And then if you're someone really want to do, you could take the time to go through, you know, every two to 500 RPM, every trim, every trim setting on your motors and figure out which one has the optimal speed and optimal economy. It's a waste of time for most people because the gains are going to be marginal from when you can just feel the boat riding nice and performing nicely. And so moral of the story is get out there, practice, get a feel for it, and it will come naturally if you have a general idea of what you're doing. And so I hope this short little video helps someone. Um, I really just trying to put information out there to make the boating world more enjoyable for everybody and make it safer for everybody and just to, you know, be a help to whoever I can. So stick around. The next video will be coming out soon. I don't really know what it's going to be on yet, but it'll be something good. So I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you next time.